This is Simon and in this video we are looking at the chain rule. So in order to differentiate a composite function, and that is a function of a function, you need to use the chain rule. So this is done by dy over dx is equal to dy over du times by du over dx. And this will make more sense when we start looking at a few questions. So first of all, we need to look at brackets. And when a bracket has a high power, it is easier to use the chain rule rather than expanding the whole bracket. So an example that we could give is y is equal to x squared minus 3x plus 1, and that is to the power of 5. Now, therefore, we need to write this in terms of u. So we say that the bracket is u, and therefore it's going to be y is equal to u to the 5. Then we also need to say what u is equal to, and u is equal to x squared minus 3x plus 1. So this means that we have both, we can get both dy over du, and we can get that from here. So we can say that dy over du is equal to 5u to the power of 4. We can also say that du over dx is going to be equal to 2x minus 3. Now, as we have what u is there, we can also put u back into this to say that 5 is going to be 5, but it's going to be x squared minus 3x plus 1 to the 4. So therefore, using dy over dx is equal to dy over du times by du over dx, we're going to have 2x minus 3 times by 5x squared minus 3x plus 1 to the 4. So therefore, we're just going to put that as 5x squared minus 3x plus 1 to the 4 then in the other bracket, 2x minus 3. And that is our final answer. And that is a lot easier way of doing it than just to expand all of these brackets because that would take forever. So the next question we have here says that y is equal to sine to 3x plus 2. And as we can see, this is a composite function because it is a function of a function. So again, what we're going to have to do is split this up into y is equal to sine u. And that is y in terms of u. And we'll also split it up into saying that u is equal to 3x plus 2. So that is the first thing we have to look at. What is y and what is u? So therefore, dy over du, now this is using differentiation of trigonometric um, functions, that is going to be cos u. And because we know what u is, we can say that that is cos and then 3x plus 2. Now u, so du by dx, that's simply going to go to 3. So therefore, times them together, dy by du dx is going to be equal to 3 cos and then 3x plus 2. And that is our final answer for that particular question. So the next question says that y is equal to root 3x squared plus 4. And in order to do this, we just need to know a different way of writing this. And root just means to the power of a half. So this means that we can put it in brackets and say that 3x squared plus 4 to the half. And that makes it slightly easier. And therefore, we've got what our y and our um, y equals u can equal. And that means that y can equal u to the half. 
and obviously we know what u is because u is a thing in the bracket so that means that u is going to be equal to 3x squared plus 4. Now again we're going to have to do dy by du that is going to be equal to half u to the minus half and we can say that that is going to be equal therefore to half we've got 3x squared plus 4 and then that is going to be to the power of a minus half. We also can find out what du by dx is a lot easier because the 4 is a constant so that doesn't differentiate to get anything which means that we're going to get 6x. So therefore if I put it over here what we have is 6x times by a half 3x squared plus 4 and that is going to be to the minus a half. So that is going to be therefore equal. If we do a half times 6x and we're going to get 3x then this is going to be to 3x squared plus 4 to the power of a minus a half. That could be our final answer, but we're just going to do one final step just to simplify it. And because this is minus, it means that it can go in a denominator. So therefore we can have 3x, and this can go over root, because it's a half, so it's going to be root 3x squared plus 4. And it's exactly the same as a step. Those two things are exactly the same. Just this is a slightly neater way of putting it. So the final question we're looking at today is a problem solving question. And it says that the point P lies on the curve with the equation y is equal to 3 over 2x plus 1 with x coordinate 1. So we have to find an equation to the normal to the curve at the point P. So first of all, let's just work out what y is, so therefore we have our x and our y coordinates. So we know that the x coordinate is 1, so therefore at 1 we can just put the 1 in, which will mean that y is equal to 3 over 3, and that's equal to 1. So therefore we know that our x coordinate is 1, our y coordinate is also 1. But the next thing we have to do is work out the gradient to the tangent. Obviously we'll have to take the negative reciprocal of this to get the gradient to the normal, but to do this we're going to be using the chain rule. So we know that y is going to be equal to 3 over 2x plus 1, which can be written as 3, 2x plus 1, to the minus 1. So for now, we're just going to leave out this 3 and put it in at the back, and we'll work out what this is differentiated, 2x plus 1. We won't have to use the product rule, however, because it is just a 3, it's just a constant, um, which means that it's no x, so we won't have to use a product rule. But 2x plus 1, we can say that y is equal to u to the minus 1, and u is equal, therefore, to 2x plus 1. So therefore, dy over du is equal to minus u to the minus 2 du by dx is equal to 2. So therefore this here is going to be equal to minus 2x plus 1 to the minus 2. So therefore dy by dx of this is going to be equal to minus 2, 2x plus 1 to the minus 2. But we can't forget about this 3 which we said we would come back to and that will make it minus 6, 2x plus 1 to the minus 2. So therefore 
if we sub in one to this, we're gonna get a gradient, which we'll say is m, of minus two over three. Again, this is the tangent gradient, so therefore what we're gonna have to do is take the negative reciprocal, so that means that m is equal to three over two. So now we've used the chain rule, that is our um, mechanism of using the chain rule to get the gradient, and now it's just simply doing what we've learned ages ago and making this into an equation. So we know what y is, y is equal to one, we also know that x is equal to 1, so that's going to be 3 over 2 plus c. Therefore, 1 minus 3 over 2, that means that c is going to be equal to minus a half. So that means that our final equation is y is equal to 3 over 2x that is the gradient, and that is going to be minus one half. That there is our final answer, and obviously that uses the chain rule in a much larger context, and normally in an exam that is what you will see. You will see a problem-based um, question which uses the chain rule within it rather than just a question which asks you to use the chain rule. So thank you for watching this video, and see you soon. Bye.